kitchen. I have been so excited to do this video. Um, I've been looking forward to it for quite some time. We're gonna can green beans today. Uh, green beans, potatoes, onions, uh, with some seasoning, garlic, and salt and pepper in them. So, um, I did a video that shows you some of the supplies you would need um, to do pressure canning. If you haven't done it before, you might want to check that video out. Um, we're going to start with getting our jars prepped. We're going to do a cold pack, which uh, there will be some things that will be warm. The potatoes will be warm, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But we're still going to consider it a cold pack because everything's pretty much going to go in cold. So we have, I'm going to use quart jars. Uh, and I'm going to do green beans and potatoes in there. So I want to get my jars ready first and I want to put all my seasonings in here and it'll make it really quick. I love doing cold pack. It makes it so simple. You're not dealing with, you know, a lot of uh, trying to keep everything hot while you're working. So the first thing we're going to do is um, in each one of these quart jars, I'm going to put a half of an onion because I just love onion in there. Actually, let me get my... I have, and I told you in the video that you needed to have a funnel for your jars, so let's use that. Keeps the jars cleaner on the top. You don't have to worry about anything getting on there and messing up the seal. But we're going to clean them too. Uh, so we're going to put half an onion into each jar. Alright, we got the onions in. Now we're going to put um, a heaping teaspoon of garlic minced garlic in each one. If you're not a garlic person, you don't have to do this step. And anything that you can tends to get stronger in the canning process. So um, if you don't like a lot of garlic, use a little less. We actually love garlic, so I'm putting quite a bit in each jar. I've got eight jars ready. I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to go do uh, more because I think my green beans will take up more than that. Okay, now we're going to do about a teaspoon of salt for each jar. And a teaspoon of pepper. You can eliminate the pepper if you don't like pepper. We like pepper, so in fact, we like all seasonings. The more the better. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is put in my green beans. So I'm gonna grab those and I'll be right back and then we'll put the green beans in. Okay, I have my bowl of green beans. If you remember, I actually blanched and froze these because I didn't have enough all at once to go ahead and can them. So I just blanched them and froze them. It was just for two or three days, but it still makes it so that I could um, get them all. And that makes this pretty easy because now they're all snapped and clean and ready to go. So I'm gonna fill my jars, let's see, about, we're gonna shake them down. We're gonna put the potatoes on top because they're heavier and they'll kind of hold everything down. But green beans, you can kind of shake your jar so you can fit more in there. And we will get these filled. And then we'll work on our potatoes. Um, I'm gonna dice the potatoes and then we're going to put them in hot water um, it can be boiling, but it doesn't have to be boiling. We want to get some of the starch out of them before we put them in here because we don't want all the starch in our canning. So we're going to um, put them in hot water for, the books say 10 minutes. I don't want them mushy. I do not want a mushy potato. So we're going to do about probably four minutes in the hot water. And we want to, you know, put our green beans down in, but... We don't want mashed green beans. We're not making baby food here, so just shake them down. Try not to destroy the structure of the bean. 
Those are going to be so good. I love these. Homemade green beans. It's a meal in a jar. And they're straight out of my own garden. Now my potatoes aren't ready yet, so um, I actually did buy potatoes. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. We're going to peel those potatoes and I'll explain why. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have more than eight jars of green beans here. Some of these are still a bit frozen, so I'm going to leave those to thaw so I don't get all the ice crystals in them and stuff. quarts of beans here. So I'm going to fill these and uh, then we'll talk about potatoes. And these green beans are really cold so now it's important when you're canning that you don't cause a jar uh, that's really cold to come in contact with something really hot or vice versa. Once your jars are hot, you don't want them to come in contact with something very cold. You will break a jar doing that. So um, I'm going to keep in mind that in mind as I put these green beans in here that are so cold, we will continue to cool things down and I'll cool my potatoes down as well before I put them in here so we won't cause a sudden change because it causes your jar to shrink or expand really fast. All right, I'm gonna set these out of the way and we're gonna work on potatoes. All right, I'm gonna dice my potatoes, but um, one thing that's important when you're doing your potatoes is that you can see that these skins are pretty clean skins and we could scrub them, but because the skin of a potato has come in contact with dirt and worms and who knows what else. Um, it does cause more of a possibility for your canning to go bad. So I don't want to take that chance. So I'm going to actually peel my potatoes um, and dice them and I'll put them in my hot water that way. So. So as a kid, I spent a lot of time on my grandparents' farm. They had a farm in North Missouri. They raised Angus cattle and, you know, I can't think of my grandma without thinking of dinner time. And dinner time there was not evening. Dinner time on the farm is at noon. And I mean right at noon. They had some a few hired hands and when my family would go visit uh, my parents and us kids, my grandma's kitchen wasn't that big, but it felt really big. Um, the hired hands would all come in and eat too. She would feed everybody. She fed all of us, but she almost always had green beans. Um, and just the smell of them. She would pressure can them. And, or, you know, if she had already pressure canned them, then she would just cook them. And she would usually pressure can her meat. And it made it really tender, but the memories that stuck in my head of that time, uh, that was before air conditioning. And all of us would be in the kitchen where she had cooked, and I don't remember sweating or anything, but I remember 
the everybody gathered around the table and grandpa drinking sweet tea and you know the teaspoons they had and he'd be swirling that around making that little iced tea tornado uh, stirring the sugar into his tea at the table and um, I remember the curtains blowing in the breeze the white curtains that she had in her kitchen and hot green beans on the table and it just is such a memory for me so this kind of brings back memories for me of being on the farm so anyway um, okay we're gonna get these potatoes on to cook for just four minutes all right I got my pan of water boiling here you want to be careful not to splash anything on you but we're gonna put these potatoes in here and time it for about four minutes um, like I said, the book says 10. I don't want my potatoes much because they're going to go through the entire canning process. Uh, and that's going to do a lot of cooking to those potatoes, but we do want to get the starch out of them. So that's our goal in doing this. And we'll get a spoon so we can get them out of there when our four minutes is up. So we're going to let these go here. Um, another option for you if you want to put in your jars, and I may go back and do that, is you can always put some onion powder in there and that's really good too. Grandma always cooked with onion powder in her green beans actually in almost everything she did. Um, it's not something that's real common today, but yeah, if you want to put some onion powder in your jars, now's the time to do it. All right, our four minutes is up. We're going to remove these potatoes, put them in some cold water to stop the cooking process. We're not trying to cook them, we're just trying to get that starch out of them and rinse them off. The more starch we can get out, the happier we're going to be with the flavor of these things and the appearance of our jars. So that's what our goal is here. I think I'm standing in front of what I'm doing, sorry. I tend to do that. All right, we have our final lung potato coming out of here. All right, we're gonna let those just chill for about a minute in that bowl, and then we're gonna put them in our jars. All right, so we're back. Um, my battery went dead, so of course. You'd think I would have charged it before I started one of my favorite videos, but while I was waiting on it to charge, I went ahead. I had enough green beans and potatoes to do four more jars. So, um, aren't these beautiful? They're going to be so delicious. So, okay, we have our jars filled. Um, I did go ahead and add the teaspoon of onion powder to each one of these. I decided that was something I kind of wanted to do. So now we need to get our pressure canner ready. Um, our, my pressure canner actually needs to uh, have the oil put around it. I don't have a gasket on mine. It's an All-American. Um, if your pressure canner has a gasket, then you will not be doing this step. But I will put, I would just put a little bit of oil and I just run it around the edge like that. That will keep that from sticking and it helps to seal. So the next thing I want to do to get my pressure canner prepared, sorry I stepped out of the video here, is to fill it with water. I want two to three, well let me show you first though, actually definitely you don't want your jars on the bottom of your canner so you're going to have a rack in there. It looks similar to this. There's different kinds but if your pressure did, canner didn't come with one, don't use it without, get one. So I'm going to put that in the bottom, and then I'm going to whoops, pour water on the floor. <laughs> no. I'm going to fill this up two to three inches. My pressure canner, over time, uh, it'll get a mark on there where you can kind of tell. You don't have to measure it, but you just need to be sure and have two to three inches in there. So um, I'm filling that up right now, getting me another pitcher of water because you don't want it to boil dry ever. It would ruin your pressure canner. I've never had 
mine even remotely boil dry, but uh, I don't even know how it could because it's sealed, but. All right, I feel like I need just a little bit more in there. And it's gonna come up on the jars quite a bit. Once you put the jars in there, the water level's gonna rise. It will not cover the jars and you don't want it to, so. Um, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna fill our jars with water. Now, I have a kettle over here that I filled with distilled water and I heated it up a little bit earlier, but it's almost all cooled off by now. So it'll be maybe a little bit warm but it won't be hot because like I said, I do not want to stress my jars out by pouring hot water in cold jars. I'm gonna get this out of my way so you can see better. Okay, so I've got my kettle and I'm gonna fill my jars up to the shoulder. About like that. And all my seasonings start to come up. Oops, I got that one a little high. So I will take some out of that one. All right, all of my jars are now filled to the shoulder ah. with water. And my dog is barking. Um, the next thing we want to do is debubble our jars. This will be sure that there's not pockets down in there. Um, once you do this, it may be that you see you need to add a little bit more water because as those pockets fill up, you can see a lot of bubbles are coming out here um, when I do that because it does hold, hold the air down in there. And if you pull up a potato or something, then go ahead and just... You just don't want to smush your green beans while you're doing it. Just You're just wanting to go kind of run this down in beside and get all the bubbles out. I ended up with 12 quarts, let's see. Yeah, 12 quarts. So I was really pleased with that. That's actually 12 meals for us. So you can see let me pull one of these up by the camera so you can see it closer as I'm debubbling it. You can see as I do this, look at all the little bubbles coming up. So it does have quite a few bubbles down in there. Look how the water level has lowered. I did have it up to here and now it's down to there. So I will have to go back and top these off because the water's now getting down into the jar more. In fact, all of them have pretty much gone down. But you can use a butter knife. You don't have to have a chopstick to do this. It's just, I prefer a chopstick, but. And then this tool was actually made for that, but I just like using a chopstick better. It's the magnet that I pulled the lids out with when they're hot. So you don't burn your fingers. I'm so excited about doing these. Um, in the meantime, actually, while I'm doing this, I'm going to turn my pressure cook, pressure canner on so it can start warming up. So that will be fine. Oh yeah, I got a lot of bubbles in some of these. And if we have potatoes come up, we're going to just smush those down a little bit. It won't hurt anything. We're going to put these on such pressure that it's going to, if you touch it, it's going to kill any germ that's in here. So uh, we're going to add just a little bit more water to the ones that had quite a few air bubbles. And this one had quite a few. Okay, I think we're good. All right, next thing we need to do is wipe the rims of our jars because if anything got on that rim, it could cause our seal to fail. Um, 
So let's wipe those down really carefully. And as you're doing this, of course you want to be sure, and I, I should have told you this at the beginning, you want to be sure that none of your jars have a nick on the lip of them because if it did, your jar definitely will not seal, but I'm assuming everyone has good jars. But I do want to mention that. So sometimes I just happen to notice when I'm doing that, uh, if I have a jar that has a problem there. Okay, I have my lids here. They're in uh, hot water, warm water, really warm water. It causes those seals to soften up a little bit. And I actually like to do that. It's not always necessary, but that's my method. I like those to go in and be pliable and soft. There are people who put them just ice cold on the jar and they uh, have good luck with it. Everybody has kind of their own way of doing things. So we're going to cap these all off. These are so pretty. All right, here's the last one. Now we're going to put our rings on. And when you put a ring on, you just want to put it on very carefully and then just finger tighten it just a little bit more. Do not crank down on your lids because if you do, uh, the air won't be able to get out and it'll cause your lids to crumple. So I just finger tighten them. Just I don't crank down on them hard at all. All right. Looks like I'm going to have to go get some more lids, but uh, I have more than a pressure canner full at this point anyway. All right, so let's come over here. All right, let's get these in the pressure canner. Uh, my pressure canner is filled with water up to about here. It does have a rack in it and uh, it is turned on. It's starting to warm up. So I, I don't want it to get really hot and boiling in there because I'm putting in cold pack jars. So everything's semi warm. All right, this is your jar lifter. So you want to use these so you don't get burnt and squeeze really tight. And if you do, that jar cannot come out of there. And we're going to set these in here. I'll get a closer view as soon as I get them all in here. Said it would hold eight. I don't know. I forgot. It actually holds seven. Seven quarts. All right. You can see in my pressure canner, all my jars are in there. Water is about to shoulder level because it all came up as I put my jars in. And the next thing we're going to do is put our lid on. All right. For my All American, I put the lid on. I, there's an arrow that I need to line up. Actually, didn't look to see where I placed that part of my canner. So I will turn it around. Okay, there's a slot here, there's an arrow here. So we're going to turn put that on and turn it so that this arrow and the slot line up now <clears throat> with the all-american you have to eyeball it and get the lid so that the spaces here are even all around and that's something that if you don't get it right it'll it won't pressurize because it'll let air out so 
uh, I kind of eyeball it and see where I'm at and then always tighten down the screws that are across from each other but put them all on loosely first we'll tighten them all in down at once uh, but I want to check that and I actually have a lot more space in the back than I do in the front so we're gonna put this down a little bit in the back and even it out it's not as hard as I seem to be making it. Okay. All right. I didn't have it even one time and uh, it would not hold pressure, so you will know. And I just cut the heat and started over again. Okay, for my elevation, we're going to want to process these 25 minutes on 10 pounds of pressure. So you'll need to check your elevation and where it needs to be for your elevation. Um, But for mine, it's 25 pounds. Okay, let's see if these are. So we notice I'm doing each one that's across from each other to keep it from pulling it all down on one side more than the other. And it starts to get a little bit warm. down really tight as we can. All right. Now we want our pressure cooker to build up or to go ahead and vent and it needs to vent for 10 minutes after you see steam come out this hole. So we're just going to let it go until steam starts to come out that hole and we'll be back. I'll let you know. All right, there's a steady stream of steam coming out of this, of the vent. I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can surely hear it. And once that steady stream starts, we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes. And we want that to go and just go ahead and vent for 10 minutes. I don't know if you can see that or not. So we're going to let that run for 10 minutes before we put our weight on. All right, our pressure canner has vented for 10 minutes, and now we're gonna take the weight, which has a 10 on, there's a five, a 10, a 15, and I want 10 pounds of pressure for my elevation, so I'm gonna take and put that 10 on that vent. And we're gonna watch the temperature, or the pressure, I'm sorry, on the gauge come up to 10. Um, even more accurate than the gauge, I like having both, but more accurate than the gauge is this little jigger, jiggler jiggling one to four times in a minute. So that'll tell us when you start to see that happen that we have come up to temperature. Now right now, my burner under it is on high and I'm going to work it up to temperature, but as it gets almost to, to uh, pressure, I'm gonna start backing off on that. I do not want it to drop under pressure ever though. If you do, you have to start your timer all over again. So, we'll just watch it come up. We are at almost five pounds pressure now. Comes up pretty quickly. And once we reach our pressure, of 10 pounds, we're gonna set our timer for 25 minutes. 
And as I said, should your pressure ever drop below 10 at that point, you have to start all over. So it's important not to do that. Um, but it's really easy, much easier than I ever thought to maintain the pressure. Um, and you'll see, we'll, we'll check in on it ever so often, but I'm gonna let you watch that gauge come up to pressure. Right now we're a little over five and we're headed toward 10. So once we get to 10, we're gonna turn it just slightly down. We did, Like I said, we don't want the pressure to drop, but we're gonna maintain it. If it goes a little over 10, it won't hurt anything, but you can see there's a caution area. We don't, you know, but this will start jiggling and that'll tell you that it's up to pressure. So, and probably while we're processing, I'll charge my battery again. Um, It's really a simple process once you've done it a couple times. There's nothing to be scared of. The way this lid fits on, it couldn't just pop off or anything, so. We're about eight pounds of pressure now. I don't know how well my gauge is showing up on here. I guess it is, so that's good. Oops. And you'll see about the time that that little needle hits 10, that that little jiggler starts to jiggle. In the meantime, I got dinner on cooking. We're about nine pounds of pressure. All right, there you go. We hit 10 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna set my timer for 25 minutes. And I'm going to turn it down just a little bit, not a lot, just a little, to be sure that I don't go terrible, too much higher than that. I want to try to maintain it as close to 10 as I can. And we're going to leave it there for 25 minutes. And we'll be back. Everything has maintained its pressure. I actually turned down the stove just a little bit to begin with and this little jiggler actually helps it maintain the 10 pounds of pressure. So it's not something that you're constantly fighting trying to make happen. Um, we have four minutes left so we'll be back when it's time to turn it off. All right, we're getting down to having about 30 seconds left. And you want to run all the way up to where the timer goes off. Do not take any shortcuts in this process at all. All right, timer's gone off. 
we're going to turn the stove completely off and we're going to let it depressurize. You're not going to touch anything on this. Don't even take this off. If you did that, you would cause it to depressurize so fast and you would probably blow the top off. I don't know, but don't touch anything. We just need that needle to go all the way back down to zero. So we're just going to let that sit until that happens. All right, we're back and the pressure gauge is down to zero. So we're gonna take off the little weight and it is gonna still be hot. So you'll wanna use something to keep you from getting burnt and there'll be a little bit of steam come out. And I don't wanna open it while the steam is coming out, I like to give it a little bit more time. Um, sorry, had to adjust that. I like to give it a little bit more time to depressurize. So one of the problems that sometimes people have are their jars siphoning out. And you can have your jars siphon out a little bit and they'll still seal. But if particles get on the lid around the rim, it'll keep it from sealing. So I prefer not to have them siphon. And when you cool something down too fast, that can cause siphoning. So I like to give it a little time to cool down slowly, even though the pressure is down to nothing, you can still see there's steam coming out here. And uh, so we're gonna let that go on for a little bit. There's no, no pressure in it though, and I can start to loosen these. I can't wait to see what's inside. I can still hear them boiling in there. They'll be boiling when I sit them out on the counter. Um, one of the things you need to do is, and I use a big heavy plush towel, is put a towel out on your counter so that it will protect your countertop as well as these jars. You cannot set them on something that's cold when they're this hot or they will just crack. So this towel kind of gives a, a nice place for them to all sit, protects the counter and keeps the jars from cracking. So. All right, our pressure's down. Let's take our lid off a little bit. I'm gonna set it to the side here so that it can cool down slowly. It's not gonna cool down. It's good. They're gonna be hot when I take them out. But I don't want them to be as hot as they are right now. These things are under so much pressure. And like I said, I don't want siphoning. So I'm gonna just let them sit there for a little bit, let some of the hot steam out and let the temperature come down gradually. So we're gonna leave those sit there. I've got my next jars ready to go in. So um, as soon as these come out, I can kind of get the next ones ready to go. So I just do this process really, really slowly so I won't have any siphoning problems. They are still boiling in there. So far, everything looks good. It doesn't really look like I had any siphoning problems. Uh, we'll let them sit there for a couple more minutes and then we'll take them out. Now this water will be so hot that I will not want to stick these jars immediately in there. The ones I've had sitting out here that are pretty cool now. Um, well, they were cool anyway because I cold packed them, but um, I will not want to shove those right into hot water. So I'll let this sit for a while and cool down before I put any more in it. You know, when you're canning, a lot of your time is spent letting pressure build up and letting pressure release and go down. You just have to be patient with it. You cannot hurry it. You would, now I have heard that people do this, but I have never done it and I've heard that it can mess it up and you can have trouble getting your lid off, but I don't ever just like, if it is late at night, go to bed and just let this thing sit here and depressurize and just remain like that all night. Um, 
with the lid on it. I've heard that it's not a good thing. I have heard people do it. But, and that's what you'll find in canning. Somebody will say, oh no, you can't do that. And somebody else will say, I do it all the time. And it works for me. So you have to find what works for you. Um, all right, let's take these out and see what they look like. Look how hot they are boiling. And this is why it is so important for you to have um, this jar lift because if this were to slip out of your hands, you could really get burnt. This is an amazing thing. It clamps really tight around the neck of the jar so it won't let them... Can you see how they're still boiling? Now these will sit here and they will cool all night long. I will not even touch these till in the morning. And all of them are still boiling and that's a good, actually a very good sign. So that means they're sealing. Sometimes things don't seal. Well, most of the time they don't seal until they begin to cool down. I saw a Facebook post of somebody trying to water bath can something the other day and they said they'd canned it for 15 hours and it still hadn't sealed. Well, at 15 hours, whatever it is you're making is going to be mush. Things don't seal until they come out and then they start to cool down. So we just have to be patient. see what seals and if something doesn't seal you can put it in the refrigerator and that will be your next meal so all right they all look really good they look like they're doing good so all right let me show you up close what we got I don't know if you can see the bubbles still coming up in these. These will be boiling for several hours because they're under pressure. So, but they do look beautiful. The potatoes look a beautiful color. Green beans look great. You can see all that garlic in the bottom there. All right, I can't wait for these to cool and put them on the shelf. Alright, above all, if you have never tried to pressure can, I hope this video will encourage you to because I was afraid to at one time and now I absolutely love doing it and I have pressure canned so many things. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, subscribe, and share. Share it with your friends. Share it on your Facebook page because we're coming into a time where groceries are so expensive and if we can grow gardens and can some of our own stuff, not only is it so much a better quality of food, but it's so much cheaper. So thank you for joining me today. See you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, it's the next morning and I want to show you what I have here. I have 12 fully sealed quarts of green beans and potatoes. Aren't those gorgeous? They just look delicious to me. Um, everything, like I said, did seal. I did have some siphoning on a couple of jars. You can see my water level is lower here, but that does not matter. Potatoes are above the water line. Not a problem. Okay. Um, I hope you'll try this. I hope you'll can some green beans, even if you have to go to the farmer's market and get them. If you didn't grow them, no problem. You still have time to grow green beans. It's not too late. If this was helpful to you, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for joining me.